Welcome everybody to another episode of the Cody Miller Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Miller. Thank you for joining me today. Today is a very, 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 very special podcast. I have with me the one, the only, the goat herself, Margot Gear. Margot, thank you for doing this. Thanks, Cody. It's been a while you've been asking me to come on, and so I'm glad uh, we finally made it work out. You <laughs> have kind of become a little celebrity for those of you who watch my vlogs regularly. I like to poke fun at you. I like to tease with you, but I mean, we've been friends for a long time, and you're kind of like a mystery because everybody really likes you, but no one knows a lot about you. Like You're very, you keep to yourself. <laughs> Until today. <laughs> <laughs> the the Margot Gear tell all story. Yeah. Nah, but this will be super cool. Um... The one thing I wanted to talk about was, like I said, right before we went on air, was kind of giving people a little bit of insight into who you are because, I mean, you you are a professional swimmer here at IU, training now, trying to make an Olympic team, um, but people don't really know what you've gone through, what you've been through, um, and a lot of kids are like, I love Margo, she's so nice. I'm like, heck yeah, you do. <laughs> she is super nice, and I want people to know. So I guess my first question, not that this is an interview, this isn't, this is not an interview. We're yeah. just having a conversation, but like, how did you end up swimming at IU? Let's start there. That's a wonderful question. So I would have never guessed in a million years that I'd be sitting right here with you in Bloomington, Indiana, like training here with you and all that good stuff. Um, it's been a wild past couple of years, to be honest. Um, so I was, you know, swimming at university of Arizona for college and um, finished up my college degree in 2015 and then uh, started swimming with Matt Grievers and Brad Tandy and some of the postgrads out there leading up to 2016. And then um, swim and trials had a uh, overall pretty disappointing um, Olympic trials in 2016 and had some doubts about if I wanted to continue swimming and what I wanted to do next. And so I took uh, almost a full year off of swimming and I wasn't too far away though from the sport. I started coaching um, at Ohio State with uh, Bill Dorincott and Jordan Wolfram and their their group over there. And I was helping out with the college team and also coaching some eight and unders on the side. And um, so I did the whole coaching thing and it was awesome. I learned a whole lot, uh, but the the overwhelming thought in my head at the end of the season was, I wonder if I should get back in the water. I wonder if I should um, start swimming again. And so, what 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 time frame was that? Was that like summer of what was it? Summer of seventeen? Yeah. So it, it was after NCAA's in twenty seventeen. Okay. Um, so like in March, okay. I finished up the season and was kind of looking at the next steps. Like, okay, so what do I want to do now? What what's next? And I had some options to continue to pursue the coaching route and go down that um, that route, and I also had an opportunity to to start swimming again if I wanted, and so ultimately I ended up going back to Tucson mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. March and training with my college coach um, Rick Demont for a couple months, and then he decided to step down um, that summer. And that's when I met Coley Stickles. Oh, yes. The Coley Stickles, who had just taken the IU college job that summer. And I, I spoke with him at US Open, which was in New York, I believe, mm-hmm. that yep. summer. Um, like So July, August of 2017. And that's kind of where this whole thing started. I spoke with Coley and... Um, at the meet? At the meet, yep. And I had told him, you know, I'm kind of at this crossroads. Don't know if I'm going to keep swimming. I had just started kind of getting back in the water, feeling things out. Wasn't really sure if if I was going to keep pursuing it or not. And Coley was like, hey, why don't you come check out Bloomington? I just started this job there. I think it's going to be really great. It's, you know, a wonderful place. We got some amazing resources. Um, The kids are awesome. And... So he really prompted me to like check it out and see what it was all about. And I use not too far from home, so I kind of knew a little bit about it. But yeah, he he was kind of the starting point of coming to check it out. You took a year off coaching at Ohio State. Then you started training, was it in, would you say, April of 2017? 
March? Yeah, probably April, May. Okay, April, May. Yeah. Train back in Tucson. And then Train in Tucson, yeah. Rick, by the way, Rocket, he's the man. Yep. When he stepped down, you shortly after then met Coley and boom, now you're here and that's history. Exactly. So I think it was, I remember the day I came to Bloomington to come check it out to see if I wanted to, to you know, train here or not. It was the day of the uh, solar eclipse. Oh, the eclipse, solar eclipse, or, that thing? So, yeah. When so, everyone was staring at the yeah, sun. Yeah, <laughs> I, rem- I vividly remember like walking into Seaback. <laughs> that day and we were kind of talking about oh this you know crazy event is supposed to be happening and then coley and ray were kind of like talking to me the entire day and i never saw it and you missed the eclipse yeah, because so of we, ray yeah so we never got to see that but that's okay <laughs> that's super funny coley is a character and i haven't done a good enough job featuring him in my videos i feel like he's so funny like people would love like he i don't know why I mean, I do know why. It's because I haven't been swimming in his group enough, but I'm swimming in his group more regularly now, so mm-hmm. I definitely need to. Um, he's so particular about his practices and his dry line, and you and I talk about this all the time. And it's like, I can only show so much in the vlog because he's really protective of like what I show. Yeah. Whereas like Ray and Mike and the other coaches are like, show everything. Yeah. Or we don't care. You know, it's like, doesn't matter. Um, it's just really, really, he's so funny. Well, so originally when I talked to Coley about coming out, you know, he so he swam for rocket yeah and so we already had this kind of you know this connection because we had this commonality but and then he as when he described to me his training he said you know it's it's somewhat similar to rick like probably the closest thing to Mm -hmm. to what you were you were doing and so i had i had some sort of idea but you know once you're once you're in the thick of things it's like wow this this is a very unique uh, mind that you're yeah. that you're working with and so <laughs> it's been it's been really fun I've I've been learning a lot since uh, since working with him and I think you can say the same he kind of brings something a little different to the table even you know at our age where we've we, when you, just when you think you've done every drill or every sort of set um, it's so radically different from anything yeah. I've ever seen before and it's I joke about it in my videos sometimes I'm like the set is too complicated to describe but it really is <laughs> like I can't like the swimmers who just to paint a picture the swimmers who do this stuff regularly in his group all the time it takes minutes to process and to render in your brain okay this is what I'm gonna do for 12 and a half this is what I'm gonna do for the next 50 then this is then this is the 25 then this is the gear I put on yeah. and it takes time just to understand right and even as you're going through the set sometimes you don't know sometimes you don't get it until halfway through yep. the set so like it's so untraditional it's crazy and it really took me a while and I'm just finally starting to kind of grasp the patterns and understand kind of what he's going for mm-hmm. Um, but it's just so, so different. And it's fun. Like, I mean, it's really, his group is, it's yeah, so Yeah, I'd say fun. it's like a, it's like a different element of teamwork too. Cause you gotta kind of like, you gotta work together. We have like, to communicate. Figure, you have to communicate within yourself to figure out what's going, not only what's going on, but then, you know, to, to pull each other on the cords and get the bands triple wrapped and all that other stuff. Yeah. Over, you know, over the details, you gotta make sure you're working together. So. Yeah. It's nutty. Let's switch gears here because. One of the biggest things that this is one thing I wanted to talk to you about. One of the biggest things that I get asked about is overcoming obstacles and injuries, mm-hmm. and particularly with me with my knee injury. You know, we were kind of talking about about it before we got on air here. But I mean, you dealt with like a serious injury, mm-hmm. so shed some light on that for me, because <laughs> honestly, we've never actually. Like, I know that you've dealt with an injury. I know that you've struggled. And, like, even now, like, you're still, you're like, it's it's a constant thing that you're, like, you're yeah, trying to overcome. But, like, we've never had, like, a, a real conversation about it. Yeah, no. Uh, wow. Okay, so when you're... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot there. <laughs> well, it's something, I mean, I, I think about it, I guess I think about it often, but in, like, a different way. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, we've been swimming for a long time, and so I... It's hard to believe that I went so long without an injury, I guess. But leading up to 2016, I kind of had this nagging shoulder pain. And um, it's it was something where, you know, I wasn't going to get surgery or anything um, that close to the trials. Right. And so it's kind of like put it in the back of my mind and try to kind of work through it and, and just, um, you know, deal with it all afterwards. And so for me, it was like after trials – when I wasn't sure if I was going to swim or not anymore, um, I, that's when I got it checked out mm-hmm. and got it looked at. And so um, 
Originally, they thought I had a fully torn supraspinatus, which is just one of the muscles mm -hmm. in your rotator cuff. It's a big time swimmer muscle. Yeah, and um, so when they asked me, you know, what's what's your goals? Do you want to keep swimming? Because if you don't, you don't really need this. You don't really need a surgery and all this stuff. Um, and at the time, I was kind of uncertain, and I thought, you know, there might be a slight possibility that I want to get back in the water. Right. So let's let's do it. Um, so that was in November. Mm. of 2016 okay and i went in and the doctor was you know he thought it was something but he was like once we get in there we can kind of see more and we'll go from there so once he got in um he ended up deciding that he didn't need to do like a full repair on my super spinatus he just needed to clean out the area and and chisel down some oh some makes excess me cringe bone. Just thinking about i don't it. i don't oh. really know exactly i have all the photos which is like kind of cool to look back and oh man and look at but so um, it could have been a lot more serious, but it ended up um, my uh, my labrum was was pristine as is the word he used. So that was good. <laughs> that was good news. Um, but yeah, I was in a sling for a couple weeks and coaching on the pool deck, pool deck with a sling and all that good stuff. But um, and the whole time in the back of your mind was it was like I did this just because I <laughs> might want to be getting back in. Like when you were coaching at Ohio State, did you like how how I mean this is something I've never asked you before, but yeah. I'm seriously curious. Like yeah. when you were coaching collegiately at a high level, like OSU is a very high level program. Yeah, yeah I mean extremely. people would dream to swim there. Like who, how often did you think about maybe I do want to swim there? Again. Yeah, like like is it something that crept up on you? Did it hit you at once? Like I mean, yeah, how probably. Did that happen? It probably probably more than like I thought it was going to. I think, I think I was secretly like, oh maybe, maybe like coaching thing will fulfill some part of me mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. that will keep me um, not not like keep me away from swimming, like wanting to swim again. But just right. you know, I thought that that that's what I was gonna continue to do. Um, but I definitely was thinking about it pretty often, um, and. And so, yeah, I mean, one, once I had those thoughts, I was kind of like, I, I need to act on it. It can't just be something I'm, mm. that's kind of in my mind. So, Did you have the thought process of like, I'm still capable of doing it, so I feel like I have to do it? Was that kind of the thought behind it? Yeah, it was... My thought was well, it went something like, I wonder, I wonder what I could, you know, mm -hmm. I wonder what I could do still. Or How good I wonder, could you do? You know, if, you know, I had this, I had the thought that I had not reached my full potential and that there was still something a little bit more that I could do. Right. And I still enjoyed swimming. Like yeah. when it came down to it, I, I, I enjoy the act of swimming. I enjoy being in the water. Um, I enjoy like the whole process of it. So when it came down to it, yeah, I was definitely missing like the process. Yeah. I mean, I definitely remember like you and I, I mean, we knew each other in college. We didn't know each other well, but um, the first time, I think, I mean, I guess, like, when we first became pros after 2014, like, we saw each other at meets, like, we talked and mm -hmm. stuff, so, like, we were friends. But I remember being on the world championship team with you in 2015, mm -hmm. and then summer in Kazan, and I remember, you know, kind of, it was weird, like, the meet had ended, and, like, I kind of had a slightly disappointing meet, mm -hmm. but I was looking around, and, you know, it's the year before the Olympics, and you always look around, and you're like, all right, now, who's going to be here next yep. year? And like I was like definitely Mar like you it wasn't even a thought I yeah. was like Mar was gonna you know like you know and I know it's hard to talk about like missing that team and not you know fulfilling the things that you've been working for but like mm -hmm. that's just for people out there who have letdowns and who have struggles and who have you know times of the year where they're not going best times or whatever it is like I feel like none of that really compares to and maybe i don't want to overstate it but none of that yeah. really compares to to missing a team yeah right i mean i can't i mean i've seen it i've seen it ruin people like it and that like makes me admire you a little like honestly in like a weird way like yeah because i've and I, i'm not going to name any names but i i mean you and i could sit here off air and talk about people that we know who have been in that situation and who it like they were never the same again mm -hmm. and it like really i mean it's yeah. crazy yeah, I mean, it's – so trials changes your life no matter what, I think, like if you make the team or if you don't make the team. That's a the truest right. statement you could possibly make. So your life's going to be changed regardless. No matter but what. But I think for me – so I didn't make the team, and 
I kind of stepped away and, you know, I went this other route and I was still connected to the sport and everything. But for me, I was just able to get this like different perspective and uh, talk with, you know, my family and friends and, and just people that, you know, valued, valued all these things about me that made me realize like, okay, I didn't make the team, but there's still a lot more there. And it's more than, I mean, you are much more than just, you know, your swimming. Yeah, so much more. And so then I kind of reconnected to that part of me. And, and now I'm kind of bringing that and my swimming together. So That's awesome. I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's like we, in our sport that requires so much time, we oftentimes, and I mean, I'm, I've been guilty of it in the past, and, and it's, it's a trap that we all fall in. It's like we live in this bubble and like all, and if you only have swimming, it's the one thing, like that's kind of how you measure yourself mm-hmm. and it's not healthy. And I, I went through like a brief period of time after the Olympics where, I mean, I never had the, the true like Olympic blues, you know, post Olympic blues. Like, I mean, I battled some ups and downs like everybody else did, but there's, there's a period of time when it's like, well now what? And that happens. And I've like realized like that happens to people no matter what, whether they, you know, make a team or don't make a team or win a race or don't win a race or have an injury or whatever. Like you always have those crossroads. And I feel like, I mean, no matter what it is, it's kind of the same mentality that just kind of progresses forward in in the most positive direction. I don't know if I'm making any sense right now. No, I get what you're saying. Okay. It's just, yeah. But I love what you said. Like trials will change your life regardless. Yeah, regardless. And, and I, I think that that's important. Like, I feel like people need, like, you need to have a balance. Like, I try to talk about that on my, co- on the Cody Miller show when I talk to people. It's like, I'm a swimmer, yeah, but, like, I don't look in the mirror and see, oh, that's Cody Miller, the swimmer. I think about all the other things. Like, yeah, you know because I mean? at the end of the day, like, after trials, yeah, like, even after matter. trials and after the Olympics, or whether you made it or you didn't, your life continues and life goes on. And yeah. there's so much more down the road that, um, that you get to look forward to. You kind of got to walk that, walk that line of, being obsessed with swimming, but not too obsessed with mm-hmm. swimming. Because I would say, like, we are pretty obsessed. Like, we're pretty obsessed. Yeah, I mean, we're obsessed. I mean, it's, in, it's in like your craft, way. right? So, like, you're yeah. you're obsessed with, like, perfecting and mastering your craft. But it's still, yeah, it's your craft. It's not who you are. Like, even, even I mean, about a year after the, after the Olympics, I mean, after World Championships in 2017, I kind of had a similar moment where I was like, why am I doing this? Like, really? Like, I sat there and I was like, what am I, you know, like, what is my, like, Allie asked me, she's like, why are you still, you know, and I, like, couldn't give an answer. Like, I didn't know. And that's a scary thought. I mean, that's an important question to ask it's yourself. So, it it's is. Good you have, like, it's good you have, like, yeah, it's good you have Yeah, it's good, but it, it's just like, and I, and I, like, even up until, I mean, not recently, but not, it wasn't that long ago, I mean, especially during my injury, mm-hmm. I was like, what, I, I don't, I don't know. And I think, like, what you said I mean, I still love it and I love the sport and as much of it, as much of it is a grind sometimes, like Mm -hmm. we have a fun environment. Like this, this conversation is way too heavy right now. (laughs) Like, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to go down this rabbit hole. (laughs) I don't know. God, Margaret, you're supposed to keep me in line. (laughs) No, we have, I mean, if you think about the group we have right now in Bloomington. It's kind of crazy. Like. Yeah. So in our postgraduate group right now, we have, well, does Blake count? I don't know. Blake definitely counts. Of <laughs> well, course he's still he in counts. I'm just thinking like he's still, he's not finished with school technically. Okay. He's a, he's no longer NCAA eligible. Blake okay. counts. Blake's so, a problem. Yeah. So we got, so we got Blake and we have Ryan. Right. And we Ryan have, held. People Ryan probably held. know who's listening, but you got Blake, Olympic gold medalist, Ryan, Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. And we got, um, Annie Laser. World champion. World champion. Um, we got Kennedy Goss, who's also Olympic bronze medalist. Olymp- yep, Olympic medalist. Um, and we got Ali Kalafala. One of the greatest sprinters in the world. Yes. So, and I'm I'm probably forgetting people. Oh, Bella, of course. Yeah, Bella. We love Bella. She's our <laughs> Columbia, Columbia, our Olympian. Colombian superstar. Um, but no, we we have such a great group in Bloomington right now. And you totally just undersold yourself. We have you. Oh, okay, yeah. And <laughs> we have and me. <laughs> But no, the, we the group Zane. of, we insane, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah, the group we have just swimmers like, and then on top of that, you know, with the staff that we have, it's, it's just crazy. Like, I mean, I just think about that. I'm like the group right now. And especially after this March, like with Lily being a pro and yeah. Ian being a pro, it's like 
there isn't another I can't think of another place in the country that is that stacked in like one location. It's weird because it wasn't that very. It wasn't that it wasn't, long ago. Yeah, it happens it was, quick, right? <laughs> it was just me. Like it was literally it was just me. Like not that long ago, it was like me and Ray. Just like, all right, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> you're not in college anymore. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, we you're gonna train. train. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh man, I just it makes me happy though. It makes me smile. Coley's banter with people. I need to put it in the vlogs more because Coley's just so funny. I think you need to get him on the podcast. Ah, for I sure. Do. Yeah. People need to. And Mike. Yeah, and for Mike. sure. A man of few words. <laughs> Good God. That'd be like pulling teeth. Having a conversation with him sometimes. No, Mike would open up. Mike and I are pretty similar in that regard. You think so? I would say so. I would say you're a woman of fewer few words. words. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you're antisocial. You're not antisocial. No, I'd, I'd, I like to listen. Mm, I'm observant. A I'm exactly. An observant listener. I like that. But I don't mind talking to every once in a while. And you wear glasses, so you're definitely a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw someone comment that on a video really? once. They were like, Mario looks like a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not wrong, but the ah. glasses don't help me read, so I don't know if that's mm. I don't know if that goes with the reading. You read part. anything good? You reading anything right now? I am reading, oh my gosh, Shelby gave me a book I'm reading and I can't think of the name of it. Um, but I've, I've recently been into reading, okay, so I, I, went, I coached for a year and eventually after my swimming career, I do want to get into coaching. Mm -hmm. And so, I've, so you do, like that's, you know, that that's is, decided. Okay. That is, that is the route that I'm we gotta, most we gotta, interested We got to unpack that, but we'll get back to that. <laughs> well, that's, that's the route I'm most interested in right now. And so I've you know, with Coley's dry land and just mm -hmm. some of the new things we've been doing, I've been kind of thinking like, wow, what could I do with kids, like younger mm -hmm. kids for dry land and the things that they do out mm -hmm. of the water that would be beneficial. And so I've been reading actually some like gymnastics books and so physical awesome. education books and random things like that. Wow. Look at you. <laughs> it's just deep, like deep reading. Like that's gotta be, that no, can't be even the slightest bit entertaining. No, it is. Cause it's like games. It's like things that you learned in gym class and things like that and how to like roll around. And it's basically like what we do for dryland kind of. Our dryland is insanely fun. Yeah. So I want to bring that to like clubs and like kids, teams. You and like I share a similar passion because one of my biggest things, and I talk about this all the time is like, I want to find a way to make swimming more fun mm -hmm. because that drives numbers and that drives people to, you know, I mean, I want to help grow the sport that's given me so much. And so, you know, we've talked about swim clinics. I mean, I believe that the traditional model of swim clinics is just super boring mm -hmm. and not incredibly engaging for today's children and kids out there. It's just, I think there's a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that I could potentially do it. I don't know if I want to do, someone asked me this just the other day, like, do you want to be like a professional swim clinician? I was like, oh, you know, I love Josh Davis. Like he's the man and he's super good at what he does. But I don't know, like definitely for a period of time, like I definitely want to do that. I could see you doing that. You, and you enjoy working with kids. I mean, the, the YouTube would hopefully, my, my, my plans and my goal and my hope is that if my channel continues to grow and continues to do well, if I can gain some sponsors and if I can make you know, uh, a, a, a decent living do, continuing to make videos, then I, then I can continue to, you know, I can train and then I can do clinics and I can interact with way more people on a much larger scale. Cause like right now you and I are pretty handcuffed. Like we mm -hmm. can't travel outside of comp competing much. You know, we can't spread ourselves too thin. We have to, you know, s swimming fast is number one. Um, but if, you know, I get to the point where I can kind of take that out of the equation and then focus more on, you know, giving back in a way and interacting with people, that sounds fun. That sounds like a job, like a great job. It's a, yeah, I mean, I like if I could That's just <laughs> find a way to make money and stay in shape and keep swimming, that would be the goal. But you really, you really think you want to be a coach? Like that's, because I've thought about that too. Like I love NCAA coaching, like Mike and Ray's job. Granted, there's so much more work than people realize. That's what I found out in my year. Oh, it's so much more work than people realize. It's it not is. a cushy job at all. No, you, I mean, they're extremely committed, oh, God. very, you know, dedicated to... And just as committed as we are. Every, yeah, to every part of the, of the program, um, recruiting, and it's a 24-7 type But it, But when you say job. you would want to go into coaching, would it be collegiate coaching? Yeah, Club? I think, I'm not sure yet. Mm. College, 
I I love the team camaraderie. 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 I can't say words either. It's cool. I love the team component of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. college swimming, and I loved that as a swimmer, and it's something I like kind of miss still. Yeah. Um, but club coaching draws like I'm attracted to that too, just because I think there's just so many different ways to to attract kids to the sport and. And I'm super interested in that. Too. I would love to be like directly affiliated with USA Swimming in the future and be like, because I've got all these cool ideas. I'm not going to say them on air because they're my <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I've got all these cool ideas of things that they could do. Yeah. Um, in a fun way. But uh, how are you with like age group kids? Would you coach younger kids? Well, let me rephrase that. You're good with all ages of kids. How would you like to coach younger kids? Like, is that something you would want to do? That is something I would want to do. Mm, okay. I'm, I think the high school age interests me, and so Jackson, our strength coach, mm-hmm. just asked me the other day, like randomly in weights. He goes, uh, he goes, so who do you think was your biggest influence mm. on your life mm-hmm. outside of your parents mm-hmm. or, or your siblings? Like who would you say is your biggest influence on your life? And so I thought about it for a second, and of course there's like you know all kinds of people, but. I'm dying to know Margo Tony. Well, one of my first thoughts was my high school, you know, my club coach in okay. high school because, mm-hmm. you know, if I wasn't enjoying that, who knows if I would have kept swimming, I could have done another sport, I wouldn't have gotten to University of Arizona, like I wouldn't I wouldn't travel down that rabbit whole, hole. Yeah, you know, none of that who knows where that would have gone if I wasn't enjoying my club, my high school club coach. And so then I was thinking, you know, how fun would that would be to just be able to like, you know, keep kids in the sport and if they want to swim in college or if, you know, whatever level of college they want to get to for swimming or if, or if they just want to swim high school and have fun, like whatever their goals are, like just help them with that. So anyways, I like the high school, coaching high school kids, I think would be the age. High school. I like that age. I would say, I mean, the first person that comes to my mind is my club coach too. My club coach, Ron Aiken and, and Chris Barber, my first two coaches on the Sandpipers. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, they were like my father figures. I mean, they, just like what you just said, I could echo everything you just said. Like, my life trajectory would have <laughs> would gone so radically different. Like, I could have been a horrible human being <laughs> without ah, these people. No, I don't believe that. I was on the verge, man. It was, there's, a, there's, there's this quote in a pretty famous article about me and, and Ray's uh, dynamic. I have no idea what publication it was in. But they were talking about me in high school, and, and Ray was like, yeah, Cody was one of those kids who was, like, on the line. Like, you know, he could have ended could've up on the either way. His exact line was he could have ended up on the streets could yeah. have gone either way yeah. and like that kind of got brushed under the rug but there were there's some serious <laughs> there's truth <something> there. <laughs> there's some serious truth to that i was i mean i don't know what i mean i believe that you are definitely a product of your environment um and think about how much time i mean outside of your parents like you're a, a club swimmer like they're you're with that your club coach like all the time and all that the environment time. Like, those teammates and everything and all the time so th- that sounds fun to me being able to impact someone mm-hmm. on that level um but you know the little kids are fun too like i had fun with the, coaching the eight and unders and i mean you're pretty much just making up as many games you can think of mm-hmm. that have to do with water it's the best, <laughs> that- it's the best. i love teaching them underwater bubble rings that's like my favorite thing <laughs> <laughs> underwater bubble rings is a must watch my video stick out your tongue learn the technique be better every than young swimmer <laughs> <laughs> you have to get better margo i gotta keep practicing you have to get better no but it also tests your like creativity i think working with kids those it's days. true yeah i think that was one thing i learned i you know because i was helping out at ohio state and so I was learning a lot there and then i was kind of trying to make this like connection between the eight and unders and the college kids and Obviously, you have to communicate in a totally different way mm-hmm. to those two different audiences. But with the eight and unders, like you, you got to be really creative with like how you how you teach them certain things. And so that that was kind of fun. It keeps you on your toes as you're coaching. I mean, I feel like in a way, that's what Coley does with his group. Mm-hmm. It's it's always jokey and light but it's never the same i mean there's there's rhythms and there's routines but it's never the same and Mm -hmm. that's definitely by design and i would i would wonder if you know he was in the club coach he he was coaching club for so long i i wonder if he would think you know that that Mm -hmm. came from that probably interesting (sighs) 
he asked me the other day. He's so funny. It's so random. He's like, what do you think your best race of all time was? And I was like, where is this going? <laughs> I was like, where is this going? And I mean, I actually, I mean, I don't think I've ever had like a perfect, I could, I can honestly tell you I've never had a perfect race. That's part, that's one of, there are many factors why I'm still swimming. swimming yeah. Sure. But I mean, I don't think you'll ever have a perfect race, but I feel like, and maybe that's just the competitive side of me being like, there's always going to be room for improvement. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like any sort of Yeah, like, everyone's I like, need. but it's, but it's true. Like even, I mean, even my best races, I look back, I'm like, okay, I definitely could have done that better. You know what I mean? Can, can you think of like, what is your best race? If you had to just pick one, like what was... Obviously not your perfect race, but I mean, you were the first woman. People don't realize, weren't you the first girl to break? Was it forty-seven or forty-six in the hundred free? Ooh, I don't think I was the first, but I oh, did break you were forty-seven. One of the I first. was one of the first. Yeah, I'm not. sure. I think you were the first. I think I might have been second. Uh, oh my no, gosh, because... Margo, you were so fast. Don't undersell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Ariana Vanderpool Wallace was a forty-six, mm. and there might be one other person, but so. I was I was in the team meeting the other day with the girls and we were talking about NCAA's and you know just what to expect from the meet and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And I totally should have said this to them, but if, but I'm thinking of it now. Okay. So NCAA's how many times? Let's see here. So f- I swam five relays, two individuals. Okay. Oh man, you okay, were so you were a relay swimmer. So five relays, but we swam four of those twice, right? Right. Just because of the eight free, you only swim once. So how many events is that? That's nine. Yep. And then prelims and finals of two individuals. Right. What's that? Nine plus four is 13. So 13. 13 swims. So my my f- fastest, and I, I, I'm i going to say my best college swim came on my 13th swim at NCAAs. Oh, my God. Of my senior That's year. <laughs> just incredible. So just at, at the end of the meet, the dead end of the meet, tired. It's the last relay. Oh, you the, champion. The four free relay. And... I'm not sure what we were seated. I want to say we were top three. Um, so we had a shot at winning. And, you know, n- I'm not fresh at this point, obviously. This is my 13th <laughs> swim. <laughs> but somehow, um, you know, this is where we talk about with, like, with swimming, it's so much like mind over matter. Like, yep. And so I had just decided, like, you know, I was going to go out on a good good note and leave it all in the pool. And so that's where I went my 46 800 free, which, I mean, nowadays is nothing still spectacular. Fast. <laughs> but, no, it's still very fast. But at that time, it was pretty quick. And um, so I would say a swim like that where it's like... Yeah. Unexpected. Unexpected to go that time. Um, but in my mind, I was like game on yeah. for my 13th swim of the meet and um so anyways is that I the should really, have shared something is, like is this that the real that you guys set the american record that was not oh, okay. that was the year before okay um we did set the american record uh in that same relay the year before so then that relay the one i'm speaking of we got second okay stanford came we were in the lead mm-hmm. for quite some time and then stanford came back and kind of mm. touched us out at the end oh. um but still one of like the best relays i've ever been a part of um and that's kind of when i think of like college swimming like that kind of that swim like stands out to me as as one of my best in the, in the four years i'm so pumped to hear i'm like jacked right now i'm like yes swim. that's so cool because yeah. that's that's what it's all about sometimes it just doesn't matter yeah i was the uh i don't know if i told you this i was the guest speaker at the ncaa d2 banquet mm, i saw week. i saw some i saw photos of that yeah you did I saw someone post something. Huh, I didn't even see any photos. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was really cool though. Yeah. Division two swimming, they they host a banquet, like a team banquet. So every swimmer swimming in the meet had a banquet, you know, the night before the competition started. Oh, before it, okay. Yeah, before it, and they all cool. dressed up. And I mean, dude, there had to be, there had to be a thousand people in there. There were a lot of swimmers. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, that was one of my messages in my in my speech to the swimmers was, when it comes down to those types of things. And we hear this all the time, like Ray says it, and sometimes people roll their eyes, but I really believe it's true. It's like feeling at some points just becomes overrated. Mm-hmm. Like it just doesn't matter. Like you went that insane time on your 13th swim. Nothing else mattered. Yeah, it's it was true. just about it's true. going as fast, fast as possible it's in the moment. It's so cool. For your team. And... Oh, man, that pumps me up so much right yeah. now. Goodness. So you never finished what your best 
Oh shoot! What my best? What you told Coley? Like that's did he? I didn't even give him an oh, answer. Him I just kind of told him. I was like, I could pick apart every single. And then the conversation, you know, Coley, the conversation <laughs> like went in point yeah. one seconds. Because even like my my uh, my hunter brushstroke at the Olympics when I won that bronze medal. I, I mean, you watch the last five seconds of that race, and my last two strokes were terrible. Like mm-hmm. I choke, I, I choked up my stroke, and I jammed the wall. And it's like if I just timed that better, that was three tenths of a second. That's a silver medal, <laughs> seriously. But I don't live my life thinking I could have won silver. Yeah, you're like, but like you watch the race, and any decent swimmer who has an analytical mind would be like, dude, Cody could have won. Like, yeah. like Cole, and that's what Coley's told me that before. And funny fun fact, that was one of the first things Cole, Coley and I ever really talked about. He was like, <laughs> dude, I was just watching that race the other day. And he was like, dude, you had silver. And I was like, yeah, I know. But like, you know. That's it, what I love about Coley. He'll, I know. Uh, he, can, <laughs> he, he finds that, that sort of stuff all the time. Just brute. Trying to, get, trying to be better all the time. It's true. And yeah. I admire that. It's, and also it's just true honesty. Mm, like he's always. Yes, raw, he's, just like rawness. You always know. You, yeah. always, you always know. Yeah. I mean, and then there's like little things. Like I try to, I do this thing before meets where, I mean, I do a lot of visualization mm-hmm. and, you know, some people call it mindfulness. And I kind of Frankenstein um, together a race in my mind of like a perfect, what a perfect race would be like. So like my best start I've ever had, like what Mm -hmm. that feels like, the best turn I've ever had, like what that pullout feels like, you know, certain lengths. Like there's moments, like I remember there was a moment at Olympic trials during the Hunter Breaststroke semifinal when I knew I was in the lead and I felt like I was accelerating and I was moving ahead of the field and I was looking forward, but I knew and I know, and you know that feeling mm-hmm. like, and so like I, I, I kind of piece it together in my brain to make this race. And that's kind of what I tend to focus on, right? Like I don't think about anything else. I don't yeah. know if you do anything like that, but yeah, I no, totally Zen chill. I mean, that's cool too. That's how <laughs> uh, Blake like... is. No, I would say it not like at the meet or anything. Right, right. But maybe I don't know, on like random training days I'll have some something like you just said. Mm-hmm. But no, at the meet I don't really like yeah. Zone out. Yeah. You don't even even before the race like you don't visualize the race at all. You just you just do. Not yeah, I don't oh, Interesting. And it's something I've kind of like messed around with, like experimented with. Uh-huh. Um but yeah. As of right now, no. Like, I'll, I'll 10 minutes before the race, like, if I'm in the ready room, like, I'll, just for s- little snippets of the race in my mind, I'll close my eyes and I'll, I'll visualize the wall, hit the wall, turn, like, and kind of think about how it feels. Like, little things. So, have you ever like, done the, I don't know, I don't know if you've heard of this, but, is, is like, the, the mindfulness, I don't know if it's a test, but exercise where you're where you have the stopwatch and you're actually, like. Oh, my God. I'm about to freak you out, Margo. Oh, did you get this I've to, like, done the 10th? To the 10th, dude. To the 10th. I mean, I would lay down and I would swim the race in my brain and stop the stopwatch. And it'd be like, you know, if I was, I remember my junior year of high, my junior year of college, the first time I did it. And I I remember I I went 51 5 with Hunter Breaststroke in my brain. Uh And I timed it perfectly. And then I went 51 5 0 at Big Tens. It was freaky. Free and that was the first time that was my junior year of college and so like I don't do a lot of it anymore but I've done it and it's weird yeah but it's real like that makes <laughs> you re- that makes you really buy into like the brain is so powerful it's crazy mm-hmm. like we don't even know <laughs> it's crazy yeah oh man that I did the same thing first time I ever broke 150 in the 200 yard breaststroke I I did some visualization before and I visualized myself going 149.0. And then in December of 2015 at, was it 2015? Yeah, December of 2015 at the Oklahoma Pro-Am meet. Mm-hmm. Did you go to that meet? I did not. Okay. At that meet, I went 149.1 or 2, no, 149.2. Anyway, like within a couple it tenths works. of it. Yeah. And it was like the second fastest swim ever or performance ever or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. So it, it's, <laughs> it's real. Maybe I should get back on it. I don't know. I haven't done it in a while either. I, I, you know, I probably will do that leading into taper because you know we're gonna be tapering pretty soon here. Yeah, I would say I, I do focus on my breath quite a bit. Okay. Like my breathing, so I don't necessarily visualize the swimming part before my swim, but right. probably more so just focused on like being, you know, if I'm in the ready room, right? Being in the ready room, breathing, like feeling where oh, I'm breathing. at in that moment. Mm-hmm. So more of like just oh. being in that present. That Good question. Do you do the, uh, is the 50 no breath still a staple in your warm up? Okay, so it used to be. It is in mine. It is now. Yeah, I've all, always, still, still to this okay, day. Still. It's, like a, it's like a good benchmark. 
like I'll do, you know, I'll do my warm up. I do a 50 no breath. And if it's like, <laughs> if it's it easy, then I'm like, oh, it's game. Then you know, <laughs> you know, like when you don't get the tingly, when you're not getting lightheaded. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, the 50 no breath was, you know, for years, my warm up. And I've, when I came back to swimming for many reasons, I, I tried to change like okay. my normal routines. Mm-hmm. And so I, it's not, it's not a part of it anymore, mm-hmm. but <laughs> you're giving me the nod like yep yep but it, yeah I, fond memories doing that and warm up for every single session i do it before pretty much every race i mean not i mean during not right before but yeah i mean i'm still doing some sort of some like form of breath control just not right the, just not the 50 right right yeah that's big yeah. For me, it was like the, the I mean, I was kind of taught that pretty young with like my weird chest. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, man, I mean, you've got some diminished lung capacity, breathing issues, whatever. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I really got to expand these lungs as much as I can. Before you, yeah. before you race. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Like, I even do this thing and I didn't realize I did it for the longest time, but. Allie's the first person that pointed it out to me. She goes, I could do your pre-race warm up behind the block. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she like got up, up beside the bed and started swinging her arms and squatting down and like mimicking my breathing. Like, <sighs> and, like oh, I was like, do what do you that? Doing? Yeah. And I guess I do this thing where like, well, I know I do it now because she pointed it out, but I like grab the inside of my chest uh-huh. and I pull outward and I'm trying to like You're expand to expand my yeah. diaphragm. Exactly. Yeah, there, I mean, and I, I have just done that like forever. And I mean, I pointed out, she's like, I could do that too. And I was like, oh my God, I do, do I that every time. I would love to like for, for each of us to like mimic our, <laughs> the, another person's like routine beforehand. So I feel funny. like we, we all have our little like tendencies before we get up on the block. Yeah. Leave it to Allie to know everyone. <laughs> just to point everything out. Yeah. Cause Allie, like I wouldn't know. Make like, Allie do it. Yeah. She'd be so funny about it. Oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. The house is super quiet without her. Did you notice? It's very strange. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> and without the dogs around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want their little footsteps pitter-pattering around the house. You gonna get an animal? You gonna get a dog? <sighs> you and Eric are gonna get a doggy dog? Uh, not yet. No? Well, considering we're not in the same place. Yeah. No, I, hard. I do want a dog eventually, but I... First of all, my apartment is not the size for uh-huh. the dog for the size of dog i want okay um, wait so what size dog do you want just like a medium-sized dog okay that's so vague what are you talking like 40 uh, 50 pounds because to some people yeah. 80 pounds is a medium-sized dog um, i'm not kidding because i have relatives who have 150 pound dogs. yeah oh my gosh yeah can you imagine like no i can't um no but just anything like even if i were to get like a you know like a lab or something okay. like a puppy right. type now we're thing talking. even just a puppy though like mm-hmm. you know you need, i want them to have space mm-hmm. so eventually i would like a dog and i've noticed other national team members getting cats and and yeah or kittens i guess i'm not a huge kitten person mm. so i will wait until yeah i have more space probably in the next couple of years but it's going to happen, though. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to bring you joy and love. <laughs> Goodness. Will you watch my dog? I, absolutely, I'll watch your dog. <laughs> I watched watch. Ashley's dog for two weeks. Of yeah. course I'll watch your dog. But if I have a bigger dog, it might be, cause more problems. I should probably clear that up. I had a ton of people asking me. They were like, did you get a new dog? No, I didn't. Because Al- oh, Ashley's dog was Ashley, in my yeah, vlog. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I think in maybe two of my vlogs or videos or whatever... <laughs> Um, that's Ashley Knighty's dog. That's the, that's who I was dog sitting for. I do not have another dog. I know he's although a cute Allie probably swallow. wants another dog. Oh, she does so like so bad. So every time we go to the mall and there's a there's a dog a pet store whatever she always she's like you know we could always do it with a little brown pommy and call him Chewbacca. I was like Allie, Chewbacca. that's the reason I married you. I love you, but no. <laughs> we cannot. We cannot do that. Like that's that's a no go. Because I mean I can ask someone to watch two. Yeah. I cannot three. ask someone to watch three. Yeah, it's I will just, not be watching. No. <laughs> See? Thank you for the honesty. That's exactly what I'm talking about. No way. <sighs> well, what is one thing, before we wrap it up, what is one thing that nobody knows about you? Oh, I'm putting you on the spot so that nobody. Hard. Well, Yeah, that you can think of. Like, well, what do people not know? Well, I have good news in the like yes, in the past couple news. days. So I'm going to be an aunt, Ooh. which is like, huge news for me. Maybe not for everybody else. But I mean, I'm excited for you. It's, it's relatively, like, I would say not many people know that. Mm. So my brother, um, who lives up in Michigan, he's in medical residency, going to be a doctor, is expecting a little boy they just found out yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm super pumped um, to be an aunt, and she's due at the end of September. 
That's early so October. So I'm hoping the ISL mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, schedule for our for our meets and stuff. I'm hoping that the baby will be born mm-hmm. early enough mm-hmm. so that I can go see him. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Well, that's um, exciting. If you don't have anything weird, let me throw you. Let me throw one out here. Okay. I don't know. If many people don't know this about me. Oh boy. I am very good at making balloon animals. Making what? Oh, I can balloon, make balloon animals. Balloon animals. In high school, I went through this weird phase. You could make some money for that. I could. I know. <laughs> At swim meets, you could like. Oh my you god! Could, like, could go you around. imagine if I was like, all right, and everybody? Sign, you oh can my do god. the balloon animal. Oh. Sign it. And, like, oh, imagine the line. Like, okay, Iowa was first of all. Everyone who came out to watch us race and cheer us on. That was Iowa, amazing. Thank you. That was amazing. But I was bombarded yeah. by people. Rightfully so. It was. Cr- Thank you. It was crazy. Like, we couldn't get out of there. So, Could- add balloon animals, and who knows what is going <laughs> Like, I'm telling you. I just, I went through weird phases where I was, like, really into magic, and... But balloon animals, for whatever reason, I was like, I want to learn how to do that. And I, I bought a book back okay, when well, people bought books and didn't watch YouTube videos. I'm sure you could learn how to do it on YouTube now, yeah. but... Yeah. So, I haven't done it in a while, but... Um, about a couple of years ago. The next vlog, we're going to have oh Cody doing I should do it. I can make a little teddy bear holding a rose. Wow. I can make some cool stuff. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, not just like, I mean, you know, like little wiener doggy. Like, that's easy. <laughs> Super easy to make it. Like, okay, you know, I, okay. I can make hats and swords and stuff. I guess I'm hyping myself up too much. They're not like amazing, but like, you know. All right. We're going to bring this skill out. And, I guess I should. And see it. Um, Dang. Well, I don't, I don't have any. I don't know. Let me think. That's okay. It's cool. You can save it for the vlog. I mean, you don't I, have to I know. play guitar like for fun on my own, but I'm At not home? like. Do you just sit in your in your apartment and play guitar to yourself? <laughs> Please tell me you do. <laughs> I mean, today, like in between practices, I just kind of like messed around on guitar, like played a few songs. Oh my god, who are you? I don't know. If most, I don't know. I think I've written that down as like a hobby before, so people might know that. Might know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Margo Gear, the guitar player. I also wrote, or I've said this before in the interview, um, my high school had ride your tractor to school day. That's kind of my fun. That's a thing? That's kind of my fun fact. What? What's the name of the town you're from? Milford Center is the town. Wow. And it's still a tradition. So this is, People do it. Was that? And people do it. People do it. Yeah. My dad sent, so my dad teaches at, at the school that I went to and, um, I forget the exact day that it that it happens, but it's still going on because my dad sent me a photo with the tractors in the parking lot. So I mean, it's not like the whole school does it, but right. there's like a but people do core, it. core group of kids that will that will you know partake. Wow, so, that's that's so, also a fun fact. That is that is a very fun fact. That is a very cool fact. That's radically different from where I grew up. So <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool though. I've I've never ridden a tractor. Oh, it's super cool. Oh man. Um, so yeah, no balloon animals, but. I'll teach you how. I'll show you. That's. I think that might have to be like in All right. the vlog. I know. I guess. I guess it's gonna. Ha- it's a promise I've made now to the however many people listen to this podcast. Has anyone don't else know. had anything like really cool that we didn't know about? I don't even remember to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Held that's is a, just. That's like, a good question. It is. I should probably tell people before the podcast, like, hey, think of this so you have yeah, something. I, I definitely just now put I you on feel the spot. like my answers were really lame. Nah, don't worry about it. It's cool. <laughs> we'll we'll totally course correct it in the vlog, or maybe we'll just edit this part out. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> like Ryan, though, like you ask him that is, his his entire life is just like a slew of random things. Oh my goodness! You know, like that's just who he's like a dog chasing cars. <laughs> You know, it's just like something different. All that's what he, he's just so sweet. Like you yeah. just gotta love it about him. He's always he's always ready for a good time. He's always smiling. He's always just up for an adventure. Yeah, that's the most. That's the best way to describe it. He's like a he's like you know he's like Bilbo Baggins. He's ready just for an adventure at all times. <laughs> it's wonderful. All right, we should probably wrap this up, Margot. Thank you so much for doing this. No, thank um, you. This is fun. I'm where glad. I feel like I know you better now. I feel yeah. like we just bonded for in sure. like a really cool way. This is the most we've talked ever probably <laughs> like in one city in one like city just one on no one. doubt no doubt the most you're a tough cookie to crack i'm just kidding <laughs> i thought i did well <laughs> no you did great you, i'm not judging you you're a phenomenal guest okay so where can people find you on i know you don't use social media very much do you have to look hold on you're looking at your you don't no, even I get know them confused because okay oh, margo's checking her phone because she doesn't know her social media handle okay social That's media okay. the only one worth is it Instagram? Following, yeah, is my it. Instagram, which okay. I'm slowly beginning to use. Yes. 
I'm gonna you know, pump I'm not those a numbers huge social media you. person. I, you are like the most anti-social media person. I feel like oh, this is a real legit question. Has your social media grown since you moved here? It has. It, has. Gone up at all? I it has. Well, okay. I wasn't public. First of all, I wasn't public mm, okay. um, until like this year or last year. I don't know. Yeah, that changes very the recently. Um, but no, my Instagram is margo.gear. Okay. And kids will follow you for sure. It'll happen. <laughs> they love you. I promise I'll start posting more things. I just, you know. I'm on it. I'm I'll make stuff to... for you. I got this. <laughs> Cody's going to help me out. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, um, you know, for a while it's, you know, you just, you don't know if people really care what you're posting or like if, yeah. you know. But I guess I under, it's, it's yeah. some, some of it can be cool. Yeah. All right. Follow Margo on Instagram. Um, you guys can follow me on social media at Swim Miller on Twitter with one M and at Cody Miller on Instagram. I imagine if you're listening to this podcast, you probably already do. But, you know, share it with your friends. Vlogs every Wednesdays. I promise to feature Margo as much as physically possible because everybody loves her and a little bit of Gary in there, too. The Cody Miller Show every Friday. This is the thing, guys. I set up a new email account for people to send in topics. Try to keep your emails short. Less than 150 words, please. But send an email to thecodymillershow at gmail.com. That's thecodymillershow at gmail.com. Send in your topics and your questions there. You can still ask me questions on Instagram like I'll pull rapid fire questions from Instagram every once in a while but I'm trying to do you know three to five main topics on the show every single week and then leaving time for me to kind of rapid fire a bunch of questions at the end that's kind of what I'm thinking um, please subscribe to this podcast share it with your swimmer friends share my YouTube videos and my channel that really helps me um, people ask me all the time to do more videos do more vlogs and I want to do those things but in order for me to put more time and energy and effort into those things like it, it needs to grow like I need, I need, I need swimmers help. I'm calling all swimmers. So thank you guys so you're much, Margo. You're the best. We love you. And you, um, until my next video or podcast, goodbye.